Yeah, me too. Oh, best of luck with that. Uh, Matthew Wright and Shani Danda are here to discuss morning, today's morning. top morning, morning, stories. Morning. Lovely to see you. We're going to kick off with a political story. Yeah, let's start as with always. this row over ministers' WhatsApps. So you might need to fill us in a little bit about this because the row continues where the, the government will hand over the former Prime Minister's Boris Johnson WhatsApps messages and other documents to the COVID inquiry. So, there's, so essentially there's a, there's a chunk of WhatsApps that are missing. The inquiry need them. But is this then, should this fall on... Boris himself, or should this fall on the cabinet office? Matthew, start with this, you. This, 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 there's so many little twists and turns in this. Mm. So much has happened even in, in just the last 24 hours because Boris Johnson is, his people are maintaining that he wants to hand the messages over, but it's the cabinet office that is blocking it. That means, in, a, in essence, we can conclude that Rishi Sunak, the prime minister, is essentially. The cabinet office could be working with him to block it, and the, the papers are speculating that this could be because then Rishi Sunak's messages uh, will be uh, cleared. We'll see those unredacted. But are these so? Will, will these messages be stored? Is this a literal phone he's handing over? Yeah, or well, is this, or is this, you know, are these messages stored in the cloud or something like that? I don't... It's, the messages are. It's 40, 40 different high-profile players, both ministers and, and civil servants. The, the argument seems to be that if they were to hand these messages over to Baroness Hallett, who's running the inquiry then in future, all ministers' messages would have to be handed over at inquiries. But, and that's, this... but that's OK, isn't well, it? Well, they're <laughs> public service. They work first, but the Cabinet Office actually initially refused. One minute they're saying the messages are irrelevant and the next minute they're saying they don't exist. Oh. So, yeah, <laughs> so it seems... Our suspicions were first of yeah. Lots of black felt tip pen through them all. So yeah, they're all redacted them. as well. Do you think the problem here is that when we go on WhatsApp, mm. there's a level of formality that goes out the window, right? And we've seen it already with the WhatsApp messages that we, yeah. you saw Matt Hancock have, right? Mm. So, therefore, by, by, by extension, I suppose, these messages won't be... The, the officialdom that we expect. And, I, and, and they get... can't be, I suppose, because they're on WhatsApp. Yeah, but also, like, it was COVID. They were managing a pandemic. If we were ever going to give a pass for, for using WhatsApp for, for sure. work communication, I'd probably give it there. But why? Why is it even needed? You yeah. have government official email. You have government official email accounts. Yeah. These are designed for government ministers and civil servants to work in. Why are you using your personal WhatsApp code? And it's, it seems... I don't necessarily have a problem with that. It's well, more what's said, said on it. It's all, it's all about the bands on WhatsApp. But that's, yeah. Yeah. But that's, <laughs> the, <laughs> but that's the problem. And the emojis. As soon as it's on WhatsApp, it's no longer on fundamental government communication yeah. lines. There's arguments that, oh, it would be really unfair on civil servants to hand over all their messages because some of them will be personal. And that's why we have to ask them to hand it over because if it was on the government communication channels, everyone else would have access to it. League. <laughs> so, so go on. <laughs> Do you think Russia could be in trouble? I think the whole thing stinks to high heaven, is what <laughs> I think. This is the idea that we shouldn't hand, a minister shouldn't hand over messages. I kind of understand the academic line, but what they're ignoring is the fact that we're talking about the COVID pandemic, the mm. biggest single thing to happen to this country since World War II, without any doubt. Yeah. A pandemic that seems to have been, to my, to my view at least, epically mismanaged yeah. by the very people who are doing their utmost to stop us seeing why they mismanaged it so. I want to know why hundreds of millions of pounds of our money went to friends of various Tory ministers for, it... for sub, substandard PPE and such like. Are they legally obliged to hand this over? Well, if they don't, it could lead to criminal proceedings. Right. But I think that the public have waited far too long to get the answers. Yeah. And because of the yeah, chaos yeah. that is going on, they shouldn't be holding it up. It sure. would be really nice, wouldn't it, to come here on this morning and say, great news, everybody. Yeah. The government has decided to be absolutely clear which is one of Rishi Sunak's great quotes, and yeah. I would like to be absolutely clear. But actually, they have been absolutely clear about what happened during COVID, because I don't think anybody really knows at the mm. moment. Uh, this is quite a serious story, actually, because it's all about AI and mm. the fact that it could lead to extinction of humanity. Now, I don't know if you saw uh, <laughs> Sir it's quite Richard. Serious. Oh, no, it is quite <laughs> serious. <laughs> it's it's the weather. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Maybe we should bring that item and Alison's barbecues forward. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't know if you saw it, but I last did. month on This Morning, uh, Sir Richard Branson, he said, AI is here to stay, whatever happens. Mm. If the US and UK decided to stop developing it at such a rate, China and Russia would carry on as normal. This... I mean, it is frightening. I mean, you've seen the films, haven't you? You've seen Robocop. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the, so what, what you've got is you've got <laughs> some of the... Well, pretty much all the major players in AI, artificial intelligence, mm. have joined this sort of group that is simply warning what might happen if we don't bring in controls. Yeah. And the fundamental argument is, once AI surpasses human intelligence, 
which could be just around the corner, mm. then AI could be capable of inventing the kind of weapons that mere humans have struggled with. Well, we've done chemical weapons and nuclear weapons. The mind boggles yeah. as to what AI, what horrors AI could well, it's, produce. It's frightening. It is really frightening. What... But how do you stop China and Russia, uh, other, other nations going alone? I do not know. Yeah, look, we have to keep investing in it. It's the future. We have to be part of that. Um, but let's not forget, AI is all trained on human-centred content. Um, and... The decision is all like automated and there's a lot of bias in that yes. and it's discriminatory. And I think this could be a bit of a distraction as a way like to not talk about that and how exclusionary it can be. So I think we, it's here, we've got to live with it. It's we've already got to going off on the wrong no, track. The yeah. problem is there's yeah. no controls. There needs yeah. to be some sort of level of control on it to stop it from and, going too far. Look, we don't want it to overtake us, do and we? And look with social media, like we rolled it out, but there wasn't any stops and checks sure. and balances. So I yeah. think this this should serve as a good reminder of, you know, if it's going to be as big as it's going to my be. Big, my, big, my big worry is... Put this, the checks I, in. You know, I don't think it'll ever go as far as the, 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 we'll, we'll, it will result in our own extinction. Yeah. He said. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers crossed, touch wood. <laughs> Pray to God. But my worry, worry in immediate in an, in an immediate capacity is is the jobs that will be replaced. Yeah. And And that's you know. You, you look at deindustrialization. The parts of the country are still struggling mm. with that. Life expectancy is still lower in those parts of the country. Mm. If you take someone's work, like work away, even if you look at it in a, from, in a cold way, that's yeah. that's taking tax that people can pay away from the exchequer, right, and, and put back into the economy. If you look at it in a moral way, yeah. which is far more important, these are people's jobs. These but there are yeah. new jobs. This is, so a, a primary school head teacher friend of mine. I'm, I'm broadly with you, by the way, but he... he I'm, not, I'm not saying... I'm just saying we could be, need to be watchful about it. Yeah, yeah he, he was saying that he's teaching children up to 11 to do jobs that don't exist yet. Yeah. And I thought... That's, that, that's sort of you know, yeah. really yeah. difficult to get your head around, but it's, I think the BBC what, what says... What are the jobs? It, well, they don't know, because they say something like 85% of jobs that exist yeah. today will be gone by 2050, wow. because right. we won't need them anymore. Yeah. It will all be AI but, and, and, and other tech stuff. But new jobs will come along, I suppose, cleaning the machines, dusting, plugging them in, <laughs> restarting, unplugging them and plugging them back in again when they don't work. Another thing that could be my job. I'm, I'm, an, I'm, an, I'm an unplugger in <laughs> Oh, are you? That's you nice. What about the cybercrime as well? That, that really, really worries well, me. When you haven't got a job, you haven't got any money, so they can't steal it from you. That's very true. <laughs> just be running around wiping our bums with <laughs> leaves, <laughs> and, know, eating our hands or something. It's very uh, dystopian, isn't it? Yeah, I love it. I'd like to get your take on this. So uh, this is the story about Amazon, who are now looking pop, pop. at term-only workers to get school holidays off. So Amazon announced plans to allow parents and grandparents who work in their UK warehouses opt for term time only. Uh, the term time only arrangement will offer 42-week contracts, giving staff six weeks off in the summer and two weeks at Easter and Christmas. However, workers won't be paid through the 10 weeks a year as they do not work for the company. The move comes as the company resists pay demands from members of the GMB union oh, following 16 days of strike mm -hmm. action since January at its Coventry warehouse. Matthew Wright. Well, um, it has to be said from the starting point that Amazon being, what, one, one, one quarter of every internet trade online, goes to Amazon, one quarter. They earn hundreds of millions of pounds from government contracts, and I would say they don't pay their fair share of tax on top of that. This is about, in my view, wages. The union, GMB, wants people to earn more than £11 an hour. So far, Amazon have given two 50p pay rises to help people through uh, the pandemic and, and everything that's followed, the cost of living crisis. Two 50p pay rises in a year, which brings their pay up to £11 an hour. So what's that? 50, 60p above the minimum wage. Mm -hmm. Thousands of Amazon workers receive universal credit because they don't earn enough. You see this yeah. Jeff Bezos screen. can swan Definitely. around in space. It's so a funny. distraction because, let's be honest, it's flexible working anything new. It, it's not. So many companies are already offering that. In fact, last year in this country, 4.3 million employees had flexible working contracts. So and that not... all stemmed from COVID days where we were From before, from, before from, from the 90s, yeah. Yeah. Um, when, you know... People could, some politicians at least, could had the foresight to see that the way we work yeah. is going to change. Yeah, yeah. You vote in your pocket, don't you? And the, I think the problem that so many people have that Amazon is so easy. So if, if she yeah. said to, so if she said to most people in the street, myself included, uh, should people at Amazon get paid more? You go, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Should they be allowed to join a union? Of course they should. Yeah. Yeah. 
are you still going to use Amazon? Yeah, I am. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because what's the because it, it, it's so big now, it's hard mm. to see the other. So thing. convenient. I, I, see, I see this one is it's slightly more divisive <laughs> because it is very appealing to parents to know that you don't have to work during the holidays. Yeah. So it'd be much nicer yeah. to know you're actually going to earn a wage um, while you're not doing yeah. it. But I think that lots of parents who are struggling to, to meet childcare costs yeah. and such like are going to look at that and thinking, even if the money sucks, which I think it does, because Amazon could pay more, it's still a better deal than they may find themselves in at right, the moment. Sure. Yeah, but maybe a better deal for everybody would be higher wages so that people can choose to, when to have their holidays themselves. Yeah. We've got yeah. time for another story. God's upstairs, thank you. <laughs> Let's talk about grannies, because aren't they great? Oh, I we love, love a mine. granny. But apparently, a recent study has found that wise and willing grandmothers could prolong children's lives by protecting them from infection. Now, this is interesting. Scientists in Finland have found that children are less likely to de develop common child illnesses with the presence of a maternal grandmother. Maternal? No, it's yeah. not paternal no. grandmothers. They're competition. A uh, maternal grandmothers can also make children feel more safe, secure, and boost their overall happiness and well-being. Oh, this it's, is can, can I, tell you, I, I don't <laughs> want to rain on everyone's chips here, but I've I looked into this, and this is research based on nearly 10,000 Finnish children who were born between 1791 and 1900. So the diseases they were having were diseases that aren't that common today. Mm. Is it possible, yes, it's possible that having the grandmother, maternal grandmother around is more support for the mother, et cetera, et cetera. But we were speculating mm. before we came on air, what happened if a woman uh, split from her husband back in those times? She may find herself out on the street. Yeah. If her mother turned her back on her, then the prospects for that mother and her children would be, because she's on her own, would be very bleak indeed. So, yes, gr having grandmother around looks like it's, it's good for children's well-being, but it could be simply that compared to what happens if you were excommunicated from your yeah. society. Come on, big up the grannies, come on. <laughs> I love my grandmother. She's my partner in crime. Her, her name's Bibby, and uh -huh. uh, she's taught me loads, and it's just wisdom that I wouldn't have had from anybody else. So yeah. I, I, there's definitely something to be said. But also, let's not forget the benefits that the grandparents get as well when they're around their grandchildren. Exactly. They get, to give, they get to give yeah. the child back. Yes, this is a good thing. Feel that's a good benefit. <laughs> I'm off to grannies <laughs> today. I can't wait to hand the child over. <laughs> they also feed you a lot, don't you go to granny, you can get anything you want. Biscuits, sweets, yeah. Chinese. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. thank you, by the way, for the, uh, the little munchies around the corner. That it's was very right. kind of no, you. Any day, any time. <laughs> I think you'll be an incredible grandparent. Well, I hope it happens. Yeah. I hope it does happen. I'd like to be a grandmother. I really not yet. But not yet. Yeah, I miss my grandmother. I haven't got a grandmother and no, grandmother. No, no. Uh, I don't know how it goes, sort of like, if we're sort of looking at this in a nostalgic way and going back old school, going to the dump with my dad was genuinely <laughs> one of my... I, I thought after the first item, you were talking about some other kind <laughs> well, of dump. You know, <laughs> we're a very open family. <laughs> um, forget about theme parks, zoos and cinemas. Turns out we prefer a trip to the rubbish dump. <laughs> High Wycombe House of Recycling said the score of maximum 100% in the customer satisfaction survey. A higher score than any tourist attraction in the UK. Uh, it beats Britain's top tourist performers. Uh, the Marriott Hotel chain just scores 84.4. Greg's 84.4. <laughs> Jet to Holidays, 84.4. 83.8. Peter, 83.6. Come on. David, love... David so Eggleton. Funny. David Eggleton, who, who, who says, I, I use a lot of tips, but this one stands out above the rest. The staff here are pleasant and helpful. You even get celebrities who yeah. come here, so it must be good. <laughs> <laughs> I do like going to the dump, and I, mainly just because I feel so cleansed afterwards, yeah. literally getting rid of stuff that I don't need but anymore. But do you have to book an appointment to go you to do? your... You do, yeah. I don't still. What's that all about? You've got to give them your postcode. Yeah. You've got to book it. I know. It's that popular that people have to be appointed. <laughs> Surely Shani, you can rock up now and go, <laughs> Shani, off this morning. You'd <laughs> rather see me on the uh, morning view. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Thank you. Oh, have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so